What makes for great art? What makes some art great, important, significant, timeless, worthy of hanging in museums? And other art, not so much. It's a question I get asked quite a bit by students, friends, other artists. It's a philosophical question, really, and it's one that I'm not sure we can answer definitively, but it's certainly something worth thinking about. A lot of people already have their own ideas about what makes great art. I often hear people talk about great art as, as in terms of whether or not they think they could have made it. You know, I'll see people look at a, at a painting or, 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 or some kind of work of art and say, oh my God, I never could have done that. This is really great. And conversely, they might look at something else and say, I don't understand what's so great about this. I could have done that. So that's some people's opinion. Some people equate greatness with, with whether or not they like it. I like it. It must be great. Yeah, I don't really like that. I don't understand what's so great about it. So I'd like to talk a little bit today about what I think makes great art, my own opinion, and you can make up your own mind. I think it's important to think about the two basic elements that go into making art and that every work of art really should have. And the first one is, is really a, a physiological element, which we can call craftsmanship or craft technique. And then the other one is more of a uh, spiritual, if you're okay with that word, element. Craftsmanship or craft has two components. An intellectual component, thinking, the mind, knowledge. And then the other component is, is more of a, from the body, physiological, hand-eye coordination, manual dexterity. The intellectual component really just comes from study. If you want to make art, there's a lot of information that you need to know, and you just need to study. You need to study a lot. You need to know about the materials that you're using. Whichever medium you choose to work in, you need to know how those materials work, how to use them. You need to know about the basic construction of, of, of our work, the, the principles of organization, balance, dominance, proportion. These are all really important things that you need to know so that when you design your art, you know what you're doing. You have to know about values, value relationships, color, color theory, which can be as simple as yellow plus red makes orange, or it can be more complex. So you take some cadmium red medium, which is a really intense red, right? Why is it so intense? Because when the light hits that color, all of the visible spectrum, except for this narrow band of cadmium red medium color, gets absorbed by the pigment. And that little bit of cadmium red reflects back to your eye. So what you see is this really intense red. But what happens if we mix white with it? Well, white is a lighter value color than red. And when you mix a light value color with a dark value color, you get a value that's somewhere in between. So white will lighten the value of the color. But what else will white do if you mix it with a cadmium red? White, and we learned this in grade school, right, reflects back all of the visible spectrum. So now you have some white mixed into your color. You're not just reflecting back the cadmium red. You're seeing a little bit of all the other colors too. So the resulting color is less red, right? That's science. That's physics. Okay, there's a lot of, a lot of this stuff that you need to know when it comes to making pictures. Is, is chemistry, physics, math, geometry, proportions. It's science and math. And it requires a lot of studying to be able to do that, to be able to learn that information and, and, and to incorporate it into your work. Another part of the, the knowledge component of, of making art is, is you have to have an understanding of the history of whatever medium you're working. People have been making art for a long time and it's important. You have a responsibility to know what other people have done before you. And that means going back maybe taking classes, reading books, there's a lot of information online, but learning about the history of art, learning about the history of the medium, seeing how great artists have approached the problem of, of making original work, you know, making great work, what, you know, different movements, why have different artists pushed the boundaries and changed things? It's important that you know that. You know, if you're, if you're a painter, you know, I'm, I'm a painter, I'm working in this kind of Western European-based American tradition of, of easel painting, if you're working in that sphere, you know, this is before Cezanne and after Cezanne. 
Cezanne changed everything. Cezanne changed everything. And, and there's really no looking back from Cezanne. So if you're working in the 21st century with a, with a pre-Cezanne mindset, I mean, that's just irresponsible. <laughs> I mean, you can do it, I suppose. I mean, a lot of people do. But, but, but you, you're not going to make important, great work. You, 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 you're, you're an anachronism. Your work might be nice to look at. It might have great technique. But, you know, you, you, you're doing stuff that, that, that was from a long time ago. You know? If you're not aware of the history of art, you can spend a lot of your time essentially reinventing the wheel. You could spend a lifetime coming up with something that somebody already did 300 years ago. And you wouldn't know because you didn't study the history of art. So it's important that you study the history of art. So you have to know the, the science of art making. You have to know about your materials. And you have to know what other artists have done and what other artists are doing. You know, what your contemporaries are doing. That's important too. So that's the intellectual component of, of technique or craftsmanship. And then the other part is, is just the physiological element. You, you have to practice. You have to be the master of your tools, your instruments, and your materials. And that just takes practice. That just means putting in the hours and learning how to do it. Practicing and practicing and practicing. It's like learning to play the piano or learning to play basketball. You have to put in a lot of hours if you want to be great. So that's really craftsmanship. You, you have to have knowledge about your materials, about the history of art, about the science of, of art making, of organizing the elements of a work of art. And you have to have technique, you have to have skill, you have to practice, you have to spend a lot of time working with your, with your tools and becoming the master of them. So that when you want to make a certain mark or a certain shape that, that is, will express whatever it is you're trying to say, you have to be able to do that. You have to have control of your materials so that you can do that. Okay, so that's skill and that's craftsmanship. And, and you'll see a lot of artists who have amazing levels of skill of, of craftsmanship in, in their work. You know, and, and that's something to be applauded because it, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of discipline, and it takes a lot of work to be able to acquire a high level of skill. But is that enough to make great art? Is a high level of skill all it takes to make really great art? I don't think so. Which brings me to the other element of, of, of art making. And, and that's the, uh, you know, kind of the spiritual, some people might call it uh, originality, creativity. I like the word honesty. That's the word that I like to use, honesty, authenticity, that works too. And what I mean by that is each of us, you and me, is unique. And I know we're all made of the same stuff, right? Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen. We all have skin cells, bone cells, blood cells, heart, lungs, kidneys, metatarsals, whatever. But there's something else about each of us that's unique. There's a, there's a uniqueness to each of us, what we might call our, our essence. If you're religious, you might call it the soul. It's that thing about you that makes you, you. That makes you unique. It's separate from all the, the physiological stuff. And I think if you're going to make really great art, you need to put that, your uniqueness, into the work. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you have to like yourself. You have to be comfortable with who you are. Because if you're not, and let's face it, some people aren't. If you're not comfortable with who you are, you're not going to want to share it with other people, right? So you really have to like yourself. You really have to know who you are and be okay with that. And once you can do that, then you have to figure out a way, okay, how can I take this craftsmanship that I've worked so hard to develop and use that put my uniqueness, my essence into my work. And that can be quite a challenge. Um, but but it's, a, it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. And, and, and I see a lot of people, unfortunately, who, who maybe have great technique, but they're not really being honest in their work. They're, they're using their craftsmanship to try to be somebody else. They're trying to be somebody else. They're using somebody else's language. They're using somebody else's ideas. They're adopting somebody else's personality and putting it into their work. And, and it happens quite often. You know, and, and, and I'm not sure why. I think maybe they don't like themselves. Enough. Maybe, maybe they're not comfortable with, with who they are, so they want to be somebody else. You know, they look at the work of another artist and they see everybody likes this. Everybody likes this person's work. You know, it's kind of been sanctioned by public taste and, and people like it. So if I paint like that, people will like me too. But the problem is you're not really being 
authentic. You're not really being being honest in your work. You know, you let's see, you take a workshop, you go to a workshop, you're learning how to paint, and the instructor shows you how to make a tree. He picks up a brush, okay, you mix this color and this color, and you take this brush and, and you do this, and, and there's a tree. And you think, oh my god, wow, that's great. Look, I learned how to make a tree. And then you spend the rest of your life from this day forward putting that same tree in every painting that you make. But that's not even your tree, right? It's, it's, it's this other guy's tree. And maybe it's not even his tree. He probably got it from somebody else, right? So if you're doing that, you're not being authentic. You know, if you look at a painting by, by Vincent Van Gogh, for example, and you see a tree, that's a Van Gogh tree. He was able to take his unique, personal way of seeing a tree, the way he saw a tree that, that no one else could see, and turn that into form. So that when you look at a Van Gogh painting and there's a tree in it, you don't see a tree, you see his tree. And that's what makes his work so great. It's, it's, it's not about the tree as much as it's about him, the artist. It's about taking your own uniqueness, your own essence, and using your craftsmanship, using your materials, and turning that essence into some kind of form. And if you do that, if you, if you have that level of authenticity, that honesty in your work, your work is going to be original. Now, is that enough? Is being authentic and being comfortable with yourself enough to make great art? No, you still need craftsmanship. You know, I see, I see people, you know, in the same vein, who, who are really authentic and really comfortable with who they are, but a lot of times they're just flinging pay to the canvas. You know, they think, I'm, I'm expressing myself. Well, if you don't have... Uh, fluency in the language of visual form, you really can't express yourself because no one else is going to be able to understand you because you lack that, that fluency. So you really need to know the language. You really have to have craftsmanship, really have, have mastery over your materials and your tools if you want to express yourself. You know? So if you're making art and you want to make great art, Maybe you don't. Maybe you're just doing it for fun. Maybe it's just a hobby and, and, and none of this stiff stuff is very important to you. But if you really want to make great, important work, or at least aspire to that, I think it's important to take a look at, at where you are. You know, if you're someone who's really comfortable with who you are and you feel like, yeah, I, I love myself, I'm really comfortable, and I'm expressing myself in my work, then maybe look at your craftsmanship. You know, I, you know how much skill do you have? Could you study a little more? Could you practice a little more? Because it would really help your work. Or if you're someone who spent a lot of time developing your craft, learning technique, taking classes, taking lessons, watching online videos, and you spent a lot of time practicing and you're really good at using your brushes or whatever tools you're using, that's great. But maybe ask yourself, am I being authentic? Am I being real? Are the paintings that I make really me? What you want to do ideally, and I think for me, this is what makes really great art, is when, is when you can have, or the artist has, a really high level of, of, of mastery of, of, of technique, of, of knowledge, knowledge of the history of art, knowledge of the materials, knowledge of the science of, of using the, the language of visual form, and, and, and this high level of, of authenticity or honesty. And when you can merge those two together, that's when you can make really great work. And for me, that's what the, the best art is. It, it, it's work that shows that high level of craftsmanship as well as a, as, as a high level of, of authenticity. So that's something to think about, you know, if, if you're making art, ask yourself those questions, you know, how's my technique? Am I really working hard enough? Am I putting enough time in? Am I studying enough? Is, are there more things that I can learn? And, and that's a, that can be a lifelong endeavor. You, know, you, you can never stop learning. You can never stop acquiring information about art. You can never stop developing your technique. And at the same time, you want to ask yourself, am I being honest here? Am I really being authentic or am, or am I trying to be some of the other? And, 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 and that can be difficult. You know, I mean, I suppose there are some people who are just born that way. They're just really comfortable in their own skin. Or, or maybe others may have a, uh, a sudden shift of consciousness where they're able to just kind of shed the skin of, of all their influences um, and, and be totally original. I suppose that that can happen. But for most of us, it's something that we have to work at. We really have to work at. So... That's my opinion about what makes great art. High mastery of technique, honesty. If you do those two things, so go to it.
Thanks for watching. Appreciate you taking the time, listening to me rant. Go out there and make some art. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see the new videos that I'm going to make and uh, share with your friends. Okay, go make some art. Have a great day.